planning science lessons that are engaging for grades 6 through 8 can be a challenge. With added technology requirements, it might seem even more difficult, but once you know what your options are, adding technology to your lessons might give you some new ideas. When you're looking at adding technology to your classroom, it's easier if you break it up into categories. By looking at hardware, software, and the Internet individually, you'll be able to clearly see all of the possibilities. Chances are that you already have some hardware use in your classroom. Computers, televisions, VCRs, and DVD players are often readily available. When used together, they are an especially valuable resource. For example, you can log on to websites such as pbs.org to find experiments for your class. In many cases, along with the project ideas, there are available DVDs and videos that introduce or reinforce the concepts being taught with the experiment. No doubt, many students are excited about all of the experiments they get to do in middle school science class. One way to add to that excitement is to record the event with a camcorder or digital camera. Video recorders and cameras can be especially helpful when students are performing experiments. For example, when testing the hardness of rocks and minerals, you can allow students to take digital photographs to use when reporting their findings. With the use of an electronic whiteboard, you can then present the findings and project the photographs so that everyone in the class can see them. In addition to newer classroom technologies, there are also plenty of traditional types of science technology. Technologies such as digital thermometers, barometers, and rain gauges are all invaluable when teaching about weather patterns. You might decide that in addition to keeping a local weather log in an electronic spreadsheet, it would be helpful for students to compare their readings to those from other parts of the world using the World Wide Web. We've looked at several different types of hardware that could be used in the classroom, so before we move on to software, let's take a moment to review. When it comes to software, there are many options. With word processing applications like Microsoft Office Word or Corel Word Perfect, your students can create neatly formatted papers, projects, and lab reports. For instance, you could ask students to use a word processor to create a travel guide to their favorite planet. Have them format it as a folded brochure and include at least two graphics and information about the climate and sites they might see. For teaching purposes, electronic presentation software is a wonderful tool, but it can be equally as powerful when used by your students. Presenting students with a flowchart of the scientific method is great, but why not ask them to create their own? This type of activity supports active learning, and as a result, students are more likely to retain the information. Because many scientific experiments will contain data, electronic spreadsheets can be a wonderful classroom tool. With a little instruction, students can use spreadsheets to compare data taken during an experiment, such as a test of the boiling point or a solubility of various types of matter. After inputting the data, students can present their findings in a graphical format. Graphic software like Corel Draw or Adobe Photoshop can be helpful when you want students to label parts of a picture. For example, this type of activity might be useful when students are learning about the parts of a cell, geological layers of the earth, or organs within the human body. You could also use this type of activity as an assessment tool. We've looked at a few different types of software. Before we move on to how the Internet can be used in the classroom, take a moment to answer the question for review. Another area of technology that can be invaluable in the classroom is the Internet. You might be hesitant to give students Internet access in grades 6 through 8, but with the right guidance from you, the Internet can be a very safe classroom tool. It is very likely that your students are already using the Internet at home, and you can certainly use their familiarity to your advantage. Researching scientific topics will be a snap for today's middle school students. You just have to make sure that they stick with the appropriate search engines. Some examples are listed here for you. Using the Internet for research is only part of its usefulness. 
It can also be a great way for you and your students to communicate with other people all over the world. You can communicate with other teachers when you need lesson ideas or when you come up with something great that you want to share with other educators. There are plenty of discussion boards and chat rooms just for teachers. Students can use discussion boards and chat rooms to communicate with other students across the globe. They can debate current science topics like cloning, man versus machine, or evolution, or they can use these sites to post science jokes or look for help with homework. In addition to discussion boards and chat rooms, blogs can be viewed online to get all sorts of new ideas for scientific experiments. You can watch day by day as experiments are conducted, or you could set up a class blog. For example, you might create a blog to document one or all of your class experiments, or you could set up a blog containing a simple experiment that students can do at home for extra credit. Ask them to post their findings when they're done. Web scavenger hunts, or web quests, are another way to use the Internet as a teaching tool. You can create web quests to help your students learn about anything from the solar system to heredity. There are many web quests already created and available for use, or you can create your own. You can also ask your students to design their own web quests. For example, you could have each student choose an animal habitat on which to create a quest. They can then trade web quests with other students. This kind of activity will not only help them learn the material, but will also help them with their research skills. As we have seen, there are countless ways to use technology in the science classroom. By examining your technology options, doing some research, and using your creativity, you'll be able to create new lessons that educate and excite all of your students. Here are some real-life examples of how the concepts discussed in this lesson could be used in the classroom, either as a teaching tool or an administrative aid.